I sorry, I just am realizing that I mixed up my notes between first service and second service. Give me just a second. Okay, I think we're good. How's everybody doing? <sighs> Blessed? Good Sabbath, huh? So Jesus asked a question near the end of his ministry. We find it written in Luke 18 and verse 8. The question that Jesus asks is a question that I want to just pass on from him right to each of our hearts. He said, when the Son of Man comes, he's speaking of himself, and he's speaking of the second coming. When the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on the earth? Will he find faith on the earth? Well, what's the general answer to the question that we know to be true? The answer is yes. The Bible, we also have talked about other verses that talk about how because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But it doesn't say all. We know the road that leads to destruction is wide, and many find that way. The path that leads to eternal life is narrow. Now, it's not so much narrow because it's so hard. It's just narrow because fewer people choose to travel on that path. More people will travel on the wide path, which is why it's wide. Jesus is asking an important question to us, and I want us to think about that for ourselves. Will we have faith at that time when Jesus comes back? And by the way, as Justin has to slip out with baby in tow, just want to say happy anniversary, buddy. You will. What's that? Oh, okay, good. I really thought he said, I'm pregnant. That's what I thought he said. But I knew that couldn't be right, so I had to say, what was that? I'll be right back. I don't, that doesn't sound very much like pregnant. But anyway, we're excited for Cynthia and Justin, who are having their anniversary today, amen? amen. And um, my wife and I are actually going to be celebrating our anniversary this month. We, go, we, we, were, we had our anniversary. We have the same year, number of years. So we're one month ahead of you guys. So if you have any questions about what's going to happen <laughs> any month, it's like, wow, I wonder what's going to happen this month. Just give us a call, and we'll tell you. Um, anyway... So, <clears throat> Jesus asks this important question. The Greek word that is used to translate the idea of faithfulness, which is, this is what we're going to be looking at today, the fruit of the Spirit that we're focusing on today is faithfulness. It's interesting because the Greek word for faithfulness and the Greek word for faith is the exact same. You have to look at the context to know whether to translate it as faith or faithfulness. The, the word is pistos. Let me hear you say pistos. P-I-S-T-O-S. It would be the English transliteration, and it means faith or faithfulness. Today, we're going to look at the concept of faithfulness. What is faithfulness? And how can we have certainty? What I'm hoping is that when we leave here today, we will have confidence and assurance and certainty that when Jesus comes, whether we are resurrected from the, from the grave or whether we see him coming in the clouds, before we pass, it is my hope that we'll be amongst those that have stood firm to the end, that have faith, that are faithful. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, be with us now as we study your word. We're going to unpack some scripture. We pray that you would teach us through, the, through your word, that we might understand faithfulness, that we might experience it more fully, and that we might leave here today confident in your faithfulness. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So what is faithfulness? I've heard one person say faithfulness is a life pattern motivated by steadfast trust in God. What do you think of that? Life pattern motivated by steadfast trust in God. I like that. You see, we have a world of broken promises. How many of you have experienced broken promises? You either have broken promises to others or others have broken promises to you. 
There's not a person in here that has not experienced that. We've all experienced the pain and the shame of broken promises. Question, will our broken promises, our unfaithfulness, lead God to be unfaithful? Okay, what's the answer? This is an easy one, folks. Will our unfaithfulness lead God to be unfaithful? Thank you. They get harder as we go along, so I wanted to pitch you an easy one. In 2 Timothy 2, verses 11 and, 11 and 13, we get this concept, Paul writing to Timothy, he says, here is a trustworthy saying. This is something you can go to, bank, you can go to the bank on. <clears throat> if we are faithless, he will remain faithful, for he cannot disown himself. Do you see what it's saying? What this scripture is telling us is that God's faithfulness comes from the fact that that's who he is. You guys heard the story about the, the frog and the scorpion. The scorpion wants to ride across the river. He wants to get to the other side. Scorpion can't swim, I, I guess. Frog can swim. And he says to the frog, would you give me a ride across? No, I'm not going to give you a ride across because you're going to sting me and then we'll both drown. And the scorpion's like, why would I do that? If I do that, then I will drown. That would be ridiculous. Frog's like, ah, you're right. Okay, hop on. Scorpion gets on the back of the frog. Halfway across the river, the scorpion stings the frog. Why did you do that? We're both going to drown. And the scorpion says, because I'm a scorpion. You see, it's about fruitfulness, bad trees, good trees. You can't, you can't get good fruit from a bad tree. And you can't get bad fruit from a good tree. So, God is faithful because God is faithful. It is who He is. And that's a beautiful thing for us when we wake up in the morning and we feel like God is far from us. When we're going through a hardship or a difficulty or a challenge and we wonder, does God hear my prayers? That is a question of doubt. And it's okay, God can handle that. But it is not a question that is acknowledging or recognizing the reality of who God is because God is is faithful. We can count on God's faithfulness because it is who He is. And, and so what we learn today is we've been learning with each of the fruit of the Spirit. We recognize that the fruit comes from a tree that is staying connected to its environment. You have a tree with a root structure and you have leaves that are, that are providing photos through photosynthesis, providing food for itself. We have the oxygen and carbon dioxide transfer that's taking place. And through all of these things, the tree is able to do what good trees do, and that is to produce fruit. We recognize that fruit doesn't make itself. It comes from a good tree. And so faithfulness, if we want to be faithful, don't try to generate your own faithfulness. Rather, get your faithfulness from the source. We know that God is faithful. Exodus 34, you remember, Moses says to God, show me your glory. God says, I will show you my glory, but I can't show you all my glory. If I show you the whole thing, you won't survive. He puts him in the cleft of the rock, puts his hand over him, shows his backside. And as he passes in front of him, he makes this statement about himself. The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. God tells us of himself when he's giving us a definition, an explanation of who he is. He tells us that he abounds in love and faithfulness. Faithfulness flows from who God is. His infinite, infinite love finds its fullest and most sublime expression in his unfailing faithfulness to his people. God's great faithfulness constantly flows to his children in an undiminished, unlimited stream of goodness. So we don't have to wonder, is God still faithful today? Because it's who God is. I mean, maybe you're going through a really tough time right now. Maybe you have hard things going on at home or at work. Maybe you've got some physical challenges some relational problems. You've got uncertainty about your future. 
Lots of pain, suffering, tragedy. But I have a question for you. Did you wake up this morning? How many of you woke up this morning? I'm not saying you're awake right now. Because that's, that, yeah. But you all woke up this morning. Let me ask you a question. How many of you have had a bad day, like Daniel Powder's song? But have you had a bad day? Have you had a bad day? Not today, but someday. Have you ever had a bad day? How many of you have had more than one bad day? How many of you had lots of bad days? Let me ask you this question. How many, percentage-wise, how many of those bad days, percentage-wise, did you survive? 100%, right? I mean, isn't that amazing? You've had a bunch of bad days, but if we add all our bad days together, it's a lot of bad days. If we're here right now, we have a 100% success rate, right? We have survived some really bad days. The Bible tells us about this. In fact, this was the scripture that was read earlier, Lamentations 3. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Now, so this is a person going through hard times, hard times in a way that the circumstances are affecting the heart. This is Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. This guy sounds like he'd be a lot of fun at a party. <laughs> now, I mean, he went through some really hard times. I mean, the guy gets thrown in, in mud pits and, and whatever. Nobody believes what he says. They think he's a false prophet. He had some hard times. He was in a very, God had him in a very difficult situation as his mouthpiece representing him. So he has a lot of affliction, a lot of hardship, and his soul is downcast within him. That means he's sad. He has a heaviness of heart. But look what he says. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. You see, the secret is for us to keep reality in mind. I like that saying, saw it on a bumper sticker years ago, and I love it. I think it's something, I, one of the most profound truths that I found that wasn't in the Bible, and it was a bumper sticker that simply said, you don't have to believe everything you think. You don't have to believe everything you think. You have ideas that come into your mind. You have thoughts that come into your mind that may or may not be true. Compare them against the Word of God. Compare them against the truth about what you know about God. If you're saying to yourself, I'm all alone, is that really true? Does, did Jesus or did, Je did, did he or did Jesus not say, couldn't have said that more awkwardly if I wanted to, sorry, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Did he say or did he not say, I will be with you to the end of the age? That's either true or it's not true. You either choose to live your life in congruence with what is real and true or you, or you don't. And what that is, what I'm talking about, is faith. Pistas. It's choosing. This is what he does. His soul is downcast. It doesn't mean, so here we see, Jeremiah is a prophet. You have a prophet that is having a bad day. You have a prophet that's going through affliction. You have a prophet that has a soul that's downcast. Don't be downcast with yourself if your soul is downcast. Just process through and work from where you are to where God can take you. He says, yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Do you see that? He's in this situation. It's affecting him emotionally. He feels this way, but he has a thought that comes to his mind that gives him hope. What is the thought? Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your, what is it? Great is your faithfulness. So, is God still showing his faithfulness today? Well, we read in the, in the longest chapter in the Bible. What is it? Psalm 119. He says in verse 90, your faithfulness continues through all generations. You established the earth and it endures. So this tells us God's faithfulness endures through all generations. Would, would we be included in all generations? So that means that God who never changes, by the way, Marlies, happy birthday. I know it's your birthday today, right? Marlies? 
Is it your birthday today? Is that my saying her name wrong? Marlis, is it your birthday today? Happy birthday. I just saw her and I'm really happy she's here. Your faithfulness continues through all generations. That includes our generation, doesn't it? So we see God's faithfulness not only in Scripture, but also in the earth. God is the creator. This is one of the ways that we see God's faithfulness is in creation. Your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. How many of you, if it was nighttime and you were lost, could figure out how, which, which way to go north? How many of you could figure out how to, how to head north at night? How do you do that? You find the Big Dipper, you follow the front edge of the ladle, you let it point to the North Star, and then you walk towards the star. You're heading north. We can make North Star compass decisions in our life because of this constancy and faithfulness of our Creator God. The heavens declare the glory of God through nature. Think about how amazing we are. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. How many of you had to take a class when you were really young so that you could teach your body how to digest food that you ate and assimilated into your body? How many of you had to take a class to learn how to do that? Did you have to take a class to learn how to make your body digest or did your body just do it without any help from you? Yes? How many of you ladies that have had children had to take a class about how to construct that baby in your womb? Did you have to take a class to figure out how to do that? It just happened, didn't it? You didn't have... We are fearfully and wonderfully made. God is an amazing creator, and we see his faithfulness. How many of you know that we can figure out what time the sun is going to set tonight to the, to the second? If you, if you go and ask Alexa or you check on Google, you can find out the very minute that the sun is going to set in Fresno tonight. Could you figure that out? Could you, is, are there resources where you could find out what time is the sun going to set 100 years from today? The exact minute? Yes. Because God is so faithful. He is so, and we see his faithfulness in creation. I love that Emily Dickinson poem my wife and I memorized, lightly step the yellow star to its lofty place. Loose the moon her silver hat from her lustral face. All of evening softly lit as an astral hall. Father, I observe to heaven, you are punctual. Isn't that beautiful? God is punctual. We can count on him. He is dependable. He is faithful in creation. Not only is a faithful creator, he is also a faithful redeemer. Was God more faithful in the past than he is today? Absolutely not. Think of the advantages that we actually have over people like Joseph and Daniel. Joseph and Daniel, two men that we think of in the Bible that we really don't know anything. Maybe Joseph was a brat as a kid, possibly. We kind of throw that on him. But basically, these guys, we don't really know of anything wrong they ever did. Now, they were, they were flesh. Daniel like, included himself in his prayer in Daniel 9 as being amongst those that needed forgiveness. But these are people that were looking forward to the one who was to come. We have the privilege of looking back. Jesus it's not going to die for us. Jesus has died for us. Amen? Amen? And so therefore, we now have Jesus who, was, who died, was buried, was resurrected, and he ascended. He is now in heaven as our high priest. He is our heavenly helper, wanted to help us right now in whatever it is that we're going through. Jesus is a more helpful helper from heaven than a high priest would be in the temple here on this earth. We can come to Jesus whenever we want. In fact, it says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, Therefore, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. When you have time of need, by faith, come boldly before the throne of grace. So how does Jesus help us? Number one, he helps us deal with temptation. 
right? <clears throat> when you have temptation, he promises to help us. So if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. Jesus will help us deal with temptation. One of the secrets is for us to believe that he is in heaven helping us through his Holy Spirit so that we can overcome temptation. One of the biggest things is if we have doubt. If we have doubt about our temptation, our temptation gets bigger. When we see how big our God is, our temptation gets smaller. Secondly, he helps us with forgiveness. Say this one with me. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus is faithful, not only helping us with our temptation, but when we stumble, when we fall, to help us by forgiving us, cleaning us, washing us, covering us with his righteousness. What else? He not only helps us with temptation and forgiveness, but he helps us finish what he has started. The Bible says, the one who calls you is faithful, and he will do what he has begun. He will finish the work he has begun. This is something that gives us great confidence. <clears throat> Your life may look like this. You're up, you're down, you're up and down. But as Jesus keeps drawing you, as you keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, he's drawing you heavenward. All the time, you're covered by his righteousness. Meanwhile, what he has already given to you, he is also giving to you. By one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who he is making holy. Do you see the beauty of that? So we have this beautiful thing that Jesus is covering us with his righteousness so that we are perfect in Christ. Somebody say amen to that. Meanwhile, he is helping us to become in practice what we already are in principle. We are becoming experientially what is already true for us because we are in Christ who is perfect. Jesus is our perfection. He is already accepted at the right hand of the Father. He is already in heaven as man. He is mankind's representative in heaven. He is there as us and for us. And meanwhile, he is preparing us that we might be happy in heaven with him someday. So, what is our response going to be to God's faithfulness as we reflect and review that God is constant in his faithfulness, as we reflect and review and realize that he is a faithful creator and he is a faithful redeemer? What is our response? Well, God wants to work faithfulness into our lives. So how can we tap into God's faithfulness? I want to give you three challenges. Number one, worship in private. Take time with God. I don't care if you don't have an hour to start your day with the Lord. I don't care if you don't have 20 minutes. <clears throat> Take the time that you can, but start your day with God. C.S. Lewis talks about how when we start our day, we have things rushing in at us like wild animals. All these things, these thoughts and ideas of all that we have to do for the day come rushing towards us. He says, push those out and create space to connect with God before we allow the onslaught of the world of the day we have to face. Before I get out of bed, each morning, the thoughts that come through my head is this prayer. Take me, O Lord, as wholly yours. I lay all my plans at your feet. Use me today in your service. Abide with me, and may all my work be accomplished in you. I got that little prayer from Steps to Christ. And I, and I try to start my day remembering that and consecrating and giving myself to God for the day. Start your day in the Word, in prayer, connecting with God and feasting and feeding on Him. Number two, worship together. <clears throat> whether it's through growth groups, whether it's through ministries that you're involved in, whether it's through corporate worship as we're experiencing now, Continue to stay dedicated and committed to being together as the people of God. We see, Bible, the Bible tells us that as we get closer to the end, the love of most will grow cold. That's something that should put fear into our hearts. Could that happen to us? Minister goes to visit a young man who hadn't been attending church for some time, had a wonderful conversation as they sat beside the fire together. They talked about 
the crops and they talked about small talk or whatever. At one point, the minister gets up and he takes the poker from the fire and he takes a red hot coal and he breaks off a little section of it and he pulls it out onto the hearth. And then he sets the poker back and he sits back down. He continued the conversation and then he had prayer and then he left. The message to this young man through his acted parable was very powerful. The red hot coal, what happened to it? When it got pulled out on the hearth, when it separated from the rest of the fire, what happened? It cooled down. The fire in there is red hot. Out here, we see a cool coal by itself. Didn't have to say a word. He rededicated himself to staying connected to the body of Christ. There are other preachers that you could be listening to right now that are much better than me. You could be staying home, you could watch YouTube videos of better sermons than what I'm preaching. You could sit home and watch 3ABN. Well, you could watch Randy Roberts preaching from Loma Linda, somehow, somewhere, better preacher than I am. Don't make it about me. Make it about the body of Christ and staying connected. What can I do to be connected in such a way that I can be a source of blessing and spiritual heat, and also I can receive blessing and spiritual heat from my brothers and sisters. Amen? Number three, witnessing to others. Feasting on God's faithfulness creates a cavalcade of faithfulness. God's faithfulness leads us to become faithful to Him and to those around us. Our faithfulness can draw others then to taste and see that the Lord is faithful himself. And that's what it's all about. These ones that were baptized are all baptized because of other people in their life, even though they made their own decision, but they've been blessed and influenced by others, family and friends, spiritual people in their 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 local church that are a blessing to them that have inspired them to make the choice and decision. This is testimony of the power of growing in faithfulness through our witness. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. Have a song on your heart. Have have a word on your lips of the goodness and faithfulness of God. Keep recorded in your mind when God is faithful and good to you. When God does something for you, you're blessed today. You have this experience or that experience. Remember the faithful ways that God has cared for you in the past and look for opportunities to share that with others. You know that value Genesis was a study that was done, a huge study that was done of Seventh-day Adventist young people back in the 90s. And the bottom line, most important piece of research that came out of it was the single greatest way to increase and bless the faith of our young people is the faith talk of the parents, especially the mom. That was the single correlated number one thing that can help young people make a decision to stay connected to the body of Christ and to the work of God is parents not just doing religious things but having a faith experience with God that is real. Personal experience and sharing and talking about God's goodness involving God in the daily activities of life. This is the greatest thing that we can do. But you aren't going to do that if you don't have a personal experience with God. We are called to proclaim God's love in the morning and His faithfulness at night. Think about that. We start off the day with His love. By the time you get to the end of the day, you have a testimony about His faithfulness because He has brought you through another day. Mark those things. Remember those things. Share with one another the ways that God has blessed. The last thing I want to share, personal worship, corporate worship, witnessing. The last thing I want to invite us to to think about is to learn to be faithful in the little things. There's a great statement. Sidney Smith made this statement. It is the greatest of all mistakes to do nothing because you can only do a little. He who wants to do a great deal of good all at once will never do anything. Learn to be faithful in the little things. Learn to respond to God's faithfulness in the little things, in your little things. Daniel, who was able to stand against a king that was trying to pressure him not to pray, 
who is willing to be cast into a den of lions. This Daniel, we know, was faithful back in chapter 1 over something little about what he would eat and what he would drink. Let's let God help us to be faithful in the little things so when the big things happen, we can be strong. Joseph, it was because he would make choices and decisions to be faithful to God with Potiphar's wife that God was able to give him the kingdom and allow him to become prime minister of Egypt, a country that he had been a slave in. God is powerful. God is good. But it involves us cooperating and being faithful in the little things. I'm so thankful for people like Sal, Sal, Salvador Gonzalez. <clears throat> he comes to first service. He and his family were there this morning, all lined up there together. You guys know Sal, Sal and Amanda? Sal, Amanda teaches us in the, in the cradle roll room. And they have all their kids lined up there. Sal called me this week. <clears throat> Pastor Jerry, my work is trying to pressure me to work on Sabbath. Can you help me? I gave him a letter. Told him he's a member of this church. He took that letter. He shared it with his boss. And they asked him to fill out a little more paperwork. But they have accepted what he has chosen to do. Sal could have just said, hey, you know what? I'm getting a lot of pressure here. I'm just going to go along with it. But no, he took a stand in the little thing. You take a stand in the little thing by the power that God will give you. And when the big things come, you're used to trusting in God's faithfulness in the little things. Jesus said it this way. And this is found in Matthew 25. Jesus is speaking here in a parable, a parable of the talents. The Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. <clears throat> you have been faithful over few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Our faithfulness can grow, and we may be starting pretty small, but that's okay. Let your faith grow day by day, learning to live not according to the reality of that the world tries to impress or impose upon you. Learn, learn to live according to the reality of who God is and how he has revealed himself in nature and in his word and through the body of Christ. I want to close with this story. Kids, listen up. <clears throat> There's a fire that breaks out on the farm. And the fire burns the barn and when the fire finally goes out the barn has been destroyed the farmer goes out and he's moving timbers he's moving the, this charcoal laden beams and logs and moving stuff around and he finally sees a hen that is dead it's burned and he is so sad, and he knew this chicken. And he comes, and he, with his foot, he just kind of moves it. And as he does, out from underneath the hen come baby chicks. The Bible tells us that God wants to take us under his wings and provide us and protect us. Jesus was willing to give himself for us. He was faithful for us so that we could be faithful for him. Do you want that to be true for you? Let's pray. Father God, we want to thank you so much for your goodness, for your word. We thank you for what you have taught us in your word. Lord, we thank you that faithfulness doesn't have to start with us trying to be faithful. It's connected to us connecting to your faithfulness, recognizing it in our nature, recognizing it in the creation around us, recognizing it through your word, realizing that you are a promise-keeping God, the original promise keeper. Lord, we ask that you would give us power and strength to live a new life. I ask that you would be with those that were baptized today, with, with Janine, Alyssa, and Tyree. Give them strength and energy to live for you, knowing that you died for them. May they not try to be good to impress you, but may they be good because you're working goodness into them through the goodness that you give to them. Lord, may each one of us leave here today knowing the answer to the question, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? The answer is yes, 
because he will find 